that up. Oh, I gotta expand now. So let's check out his money, shall we? Argent is Unit under at about two grand. Um, that's not gonna last long. <laughs> As you can see, he's going to be broke here very, very shortly. I left the garrison down here for vision by by Argent, so that's good. Um, the lava is also pretty much mined out. Neither player has expanded, so that's bad. Um, whenever you're going for a big attack and pushing back, um, this is totally... Oh my god, fraps, why? Why? Is there something I have? I don't know. Is something else I have running? There's probably going to be some uh, disjointedness in the video here, but... Oh well, that's fine. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, right. right, so a good time to expand because players aren't as map aware as they should should be and they don't have overall map vision. Um, neither player does at this point. They don't have this garrisoned. Um, that the better, the better map vision you have, the better of a sense of where your opponent is, what he's doing, and what he's doing. So if you see someone that's expanded quickly, then you know they probably don't have a lot of money to spend on units. This is just basic RTS fundamentals here. Um, and when you're attacking, and they don't have very good... Wait, did these things survive? No way he rebuilt all these freaking... Huh. Wow. Okay, well, those survived. That's nice. Um, I don't think they have an airfield up, so they should be taking damage. Uh, oh, or they're not... No, yeah, they are. They're, those are green. Do I just... Oh, there's that. I found the airfield. He either rebuilt all of those, and I completely missed it, or uh, they survived. So, anyway... Um, going back to my previous statement about uh, expanding, when you go into an attack and it just it's so easy to get caught in that trap of just looking at the battle, then when you're expanding, when your opponent has zero, zero consciousness dedicated to that kind of thought, like expand time, or I should be making sure my opponent doesn't expand because there's only one Tiberium field left on the entire map, do that, do that. Expand when he isn't thinking about it. Um, take advantage of that. It's so it's it's so easy to fall into the trap of thinking that the other the, the player you're playing isn't human, you know that he doesn't make mistakes like you do. So think of things that would really mess you up, or things that would confuse you, or things that you would miss, and do that to someone else. Because odds are, that's probably going to happen. I mean, of course, this doesn't work with like a rank, you know, six player and technique. You know, it's it's a difference in skill there. But for the most part, generalizing. You know, the other person is human too, so take advantage of that. Really love the fact that the EMP control center is still its lavas. Um, don't, uh, there's never a bad time for use of EMP. Um, it has a little bit of a delay, so it's kind of hard to take down aircraft with it. But uh, all the same, there's no aircraft being used, so. Uh, I mean, it's just a, it's, a, I think it's free too, once you capture it. I mean, there's just no reason not to get that on this map. It's one engineer. Like, zero reason with how useful it can, I mean, it can literally destroy entire armies. I mean, not by itself, but in an equal battle where it's up to debate on who's going to win, you can turn that into a guaranteed win. And even if you don't kill everything, you'll kill enough that he's going to have to withdraw and you can push forward again. So, um, that's just kind of straightforward there, right there. Um, yeah, so now both players, Exlava, neither player has done anything. They've just been letting their harvesters go back and forth, which is really dangerous because it's really easy to isolate a lone harvester. So Exlava, I mean, this is just a game of economy now. Either player had pit bulls or orcas, it'd be game over because you could just park your pit bulls right here. Um, and then his predators would have to come up to take care of that. Then you move your predators in and take out his base. Or if his predators stay in his base to defend it, you're going to kill all of his harvesters and he'll be broke. So... Yeah, this is a uh, game definitely could be decided very, very quickly. Um, and look at all the empty harvesters. They're both pretty much broke at this point, I think. They're antlining their harvesters, the easiest targets in the world. Oh, okay, finally we have a surveyor up and a, uh, an, an outpost constructed for... This is probably going to be the reason that the game turns out the way it does. If Argent gets control of this Tiberium field, that's game. Easy. Um, and if he had orcas, that's game. If he had... Pit, I mean, if he killed harvesters, that's it. Both players are at a point where they're struggling just to stay stay up. It's good that he sold his tier four building, not needed. Um, uh, Sonic emitter is a nice safety net, but again, it, 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 at times like these, you really have to cut back on, on as much as possible. Also, I mean, in my opinion, take out the Sonic emitter and put three missile squads into the bunker, and that's gonna do just as well, if not better, <laughs> against armored assaults. Um, so, so yeah, I think you could definitely sell that and get back some cash. Let's see how they're both doing on money. Um, Argent is at two grand. Five grand for Exlava. Where is his money? I mean, his money is literally coming in from his harvesters. They're traveling across the map, so... So, uh, he's got a lot of a lot of funds. Oh my 
God, he's gotta, gotta get down. Use your, use your firehawks, use them. Please, go and kill. Because the second these refineries go down, one player will lose, I guarantee it. <laughs> guarantee it. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so, we have a nice little push here by Xlava. Kind of capitalizing on the fact that um, this base is completely undefended. <laughs> and it, ooh, that was beautiful. AA goes down. That's that's one thing about stack defenses that just won't cut it. Is one you're you're investing a lot of money into something that can't, move, and that will only be used when on. It, it's essentially a tank that can only be used on your opponent's terms, right? Um, oh yeah. See this and the shatterer is what should be being targeted here because oh lordy, it just does so much freaking damage, so much damage, and the yeah, Xlob is not going to get the best of that confrontation. He knows that. Um, went for tier four again. See. At this point, you really don't have any extra money. That should be going into tanks. That should be going to mobile forces or harassment. Because tier 4, in and of itself, is very expensive. And the only abilities you get to use from it are really expensive, too. And, I mean, especially because, I mean, EMP, the shockwave artillery, is really the most useful thing that you get out of tier 4. And Xlava already has the EMP facility. So I would have to strongly disagree with the fact that he went tier 4 here. Um... He needs the funds for elsewhere, um, quite honestly. I mean, it's so easy when you when money disappears so quick. Oh, he did a drop with the... Once again, these zone troopers are, are gloriously powerful. Oh my god, no, kill the refinery, kill the refinery, kill the refinery! Oh, oh this is a game of economy. This is such a... I mean, the can draft as a whole, but in particularly this game. If you kill... It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you kill the construction at this point. He doesn't... Okay, maybe it does. Does he have a war factory? Nope. Okay, so, still though, you're, this is something that, uh, uh, is he gonna get the kill? He will. All the same though, so the construction yard's down, war factory's down. Hmm. Well, actually, that's pretty hard to argue against. I mean, all he has is a barracks. Now. How the hell? All he has is a barracks now. All Argent has is barracks. And he's been defeated. I thought that Xlava, I could have sworn Xlava said he lost this game. <laughs> All right, sweet. Um, well, that's good. Sweet. Well, well played by Xlava. Um, in that case, yeah, suiciding those was was good. If there had been a war factory, though, I would really have to strongly disagree with him going for the construction yard because you're guaranteed to kill those refineries with the zone troopers, and maybe even save your zone troopers. But he wasn't guaranteed. He, he barely got that kill in that construction yard. But uh, all the same, that was that was quite fun. That was a nice little GDI mirror. Um, really a uh, nice back and forth. I really honestly thought Slava was going to lose. <laughs> I don't know if you heard me mention, I was saying something about the outcome of the game and uh, and why I thought Slava was going to lose, but I was wrong. So, so well played to both. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if, uh, one thing to take away from this particular game would be, um, you know, I'm going to do another one. Screw that. This is going to be two games. Um, first one was for a friend. And the second one is just what I'm going to do for fun, because I want to watch this replay. And they uh, might as well keep... T I'll be talking to myself anyway, so I might as well... Might as well talk about it. I'll probably split up the VOD here, but... But yeah, so... Okay. Oh, again? Seriously, another VGI in here? I didn't, I didn't even know that. Alright, well... This will be a slightly higher level of play. We have Bonus and Eclipse, both of whom are now King Draft experts. Complete. Same exact map, same exact matchup, so... So, things that we learned from the last mission, or the last mission, god, I'm such a single player nerd. Um, things we learned from the last game, rather, can be applied here. Um, and you'll see it at its very best, um, at Kane Giraffe. And because these are two of the best players. Um, but, unfortunately, this, uh, this very beginning opening is, I mean, if your openings, if you, you suck at openings, then, then just watch one of these. Because, watch any pro, pro do these. Don't watch around for different styles, because really, as VGDI, there's there's one thing to do, and both players... I mean, if you look at the map, it's literally mirrored. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't really know how better to say it. Troop movements are completely the same. <laughs> They're gonna meet right in the middle. Oh, who was faster? Who was faster? Eclipse was faster. All right. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is just so, so, so normal. Um, always... This, this is another thing that I talk about a lot, but vision... Um, just the fact that these guys having as much like I, I hinted on this in the last one if you didn't watch it though 
Um, having vision across the map not only tells you what your opponent is doing, but it tells you what your opponent is not doing. And those of you who think that some of this is sign familiar, um, I am totally and completely ripping some of this off from Day9, who is a, yeah, I mean, he's a professional commentator for StarCraft 2. Um, I despise that game, like, in every way, shape, and form. I, I just hate it a lot. But, um, but I watch him just because he's such a good commentator and such a good analyst. Um, and he knows his game so well. And I watch him more in the interest of making myself a better commentator rather than I like StarCraft 2. Because I, I really don't. At all. Um, I think it's... I think it's... I mean, I see why I see why people would like it. But it just doesn't seem fun to me. Like, the object of a game is to be fun. And you have to put so much work into that game to make it... To, to be even competitive online. Like, anywhere close to being competitive, you have to have really, really strong senses of math. I mean, if you could get good at StarCraft 2, you can get good at pretty much any RTS, in my opinion. Um, because it's just the macro elements, the, the... I mean, like, the thing that annoys me is that games will be won or lost based off of who had the better build order, or who played the build order better, or, you know, who was faster, in essence, who had better macro. And I, I get that's a skill, that's legitimate. I don't, I'm not saying that it's not, but I, it just doesn't appeal to me at all, in my opinion. I like it more. I mean, actually, unit. I mean, it feels like numbers kind of attacking each other. It's like whoever macro better got out the most units at the beginning is gonna be the winner because when those two battles or when that one battle of the entire match happens, they have more units, so they win. I mean, I know it's not that simple, but but all the same. Um, that's why I like Kane's Wrath more. Plus, Command Conquer always has a special place in my heart. Um, okay, perhaps is being stupid again. Pause. Stop. Go all the way up. 30, back again, yay! And it goes down again, uh-oh. And let's try this. Stop, start, 30. Stays at 30, thank you, all right. I don't know why Fraps is zapping me up. I mean, maybe it's something happened in my background. Who knows? Um, I did this last game, but at season I'm gonna split these up most likely. Um, I would like to plug uh, the unofficial 1.03 that just came out from Chris the GDI fan. Thank you so much um, for reinvigorating the community. For those of you who aren't part of... I mean, I have no idea how you'd be watching this if you weren't on Game Replays. Oh, it'll be on YouTube. So the uh, six other people who watch my videos on YouTube will, will be able to know this. But Kane Giraffe is now the most active section on GameReplays.org over StarCraft II, which is, you know, a worldwide game, and Dawn of War II, which is getting a new expansion pack soon, so they have plenty to talk about. And still, Kane Giraffe is better, so... That makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. So, pretty standard GDI play here from both players. Except for the fact that, I mean, I don't get it. If you think of the game in terms of economy and numbers, which I just said I hated about StarCraft 2, but if you apply that reasoning, why the hell would you not get these towers and the EMP? I mean, economically, you're sacrificing an engineer for what could stop most of this... It, the entire force, it will, in, in essence, suppress the missile squads. And it will one-hit these APCs. If you had both those towers, Eclipse couldn't move forward here. He'd have to go around. So, and then the EMP? You have the entire game and it's free EMP that's like entire army worth? Man, that's... I, I just don't get why more people don't do that. And so, yep, we see a nice standard Predator APC with rocket squads. A few, uh, few nice little rifleman squads thrown in. Composite armor. So the only difference in the build so far that I'm seeing is the fact the bonus went for an armory. And promptly sold it apparently. For unless he has it down here. Nope. He sold he got for he got his armory and sold it. Getting composite armor for his missile squads. That may be the difference. That may very well be the difference. Um, he is way, way down on numbers. Um, but he's uh, certainly got actually he's not even that far down on numbers. So his riflemen are definitely gonna be able to mow through the uh, enemies, right the squads a lot faster. We'll definitely lose the armor battle, but uh, I, I don't see him losing the, uh, the infantry. Positive armor really makes a point of difference. Oh, AP ammo down. Alright, never mind. I think they're kind of even again. Actually, more than even, I'd say that uh, Eclipse definitely has the better of this situation. Time to run away! Run! Run! Run, I say! Or crawl! Crawl! Crawl as you get bombarded by like 18 missiles and don't die. This one guy. Okay, now he's dead. <laughs> I love that one. When a, a suppressed infantry dies, they curl up into a ball. 
as if, you know, going to the fetal position is going to keep them safe. Okay, now APM for both teams. So, this is kind of a mirror in every sense of the word.